We begin with some self-proclaimed Biafra loyalists who today called for a referendum to enable them to choose where to belong. The group made up of mostly young people assembled at Afara Road, Umwaha, the Abia state capital. They want a date when every electorate in the country will have the opportunity to make a clear decision where they want to belong. But the commissioner of police, Abia state, who described their action as unlawful, has warned that the force is monitoring the activities of the group and people should not allow whatever interest they're clamoring for infringe on other people's rights. Hundreds of youth from the eastern part of Nigeria leave their residence in Uyo, Enugu, Onicha, Owere, and other parts of the east and converge on Afara Road in Umwahia. Most of them waving flags and disrupting traffic flow for many hours. They say they have only one demand, which is for the government to pick a date when every Nigerian of voting age will be given opportunity to decide in a referendum where they want to belong. Now we need the date of referendum, no, no Biafra. We need to have the freedom of what to go. No election of the divide and root artists. We are one. The protesters singing and drumming also accused the authorities of not giving them the rights extended to other citizens from the rest of the country. They are not treating us like, like we are the son of the land. They are just treating us like we are, we are from nowhere. The Nigerian police has warned the protesters to be mindful of the fact that the law of the land does not permit anyone to engage in acts capable of disrupting the peace of the country. I want to assure all Abians that we should please... Even at this time that we see a lot of procession, especially in Umaria, I want to ask that everybody should be cautious. Nobody has approved any procession. And whoever does anything that is contrary to the law of the land will be addressed and, and the, issue, the issue will be addressed appropriately. We want to say that the police is matured in handling all this gathering that have been mounting most of the time around that Afara address. I am saying we are giving this one that people should work within the office of the law. They should not infringe on the fundamental human rights of others. Where you begin to block the road and you begin to instill fears in the residents, then that we will have to ask you some questions. In the last two years, different groups have come up with separate threats and demands seeking to achieve their various interests. But the federal government has continued to preach for peaceful coexistence among all ethnic nationalities in the country. As the acting president puts it, quote, we are better off living together as one united Nigeria. In the meantime, the Ohanes in Digbo in the 19 northern states and the southern Kaduna People's Union have condemned the agitation for secession from Nigeria by the indigenous people of Biafra and the recent quit notice ultimatum issued to Igbo's living in the north by the Arua Youth Organization. The group say what the aggrieved persons have asked for is the implementation of the 2014 National Conference Report. The group made this call during a consultative meeting in Kaduna State. Leaders of the Ohanese and Digbo in the 19 northern states and the federal capital territory and those of the southern Kaduna People's Union. They are here on a peace call to northerners and the Igbos resident in the northern part of the country. We will not, not even in our dream, not even in our wildest imagination, will we ask any bona fide Nigerian to leave southern Kaduna. Yet to record a single incident where the Igbos have caused any trouble, where the Igbos have caused any heartache for any of our people, who would have told them, do not go that way? For the Ohanese and Igbo leader, the call for secession was a subtle call for restructuring. We are not agitating for Biafra. What then are Igbos principally agitating for? They are agitating for Nigeria. That's is founded on equity. 
Nigeria that is founded on justice. Nigeria that is fair to every Nigerian. Nigeria that is restructured. Nigeria that is indeed a federal state. As the call for a referendum by some Igbos continue and the quit notice threats seems to wind down, these leaders call for a peaceful resolution of the crisis that resulted from both actions. The governor of Ikiti State, Ayodele Faishi, says he is concerned by the absence of President Mahmoud Buhari from the country. In a press conference today in Adirikiti, Governor Faishi alleged that a certain cabal have taken over the management of the president's health and they are preventing other Nigerians from having information on the actual health status of the president. He then called on the president to resign. You know, the fact that our first lady her Excellency Mrs. Aisha Buhari was not allowed to see her husband during her last visit to the United Kingdom. Only three Nigerians who are of the president's cabal are allowed access to the president. They go intermittently and keep this secret to their chest. Like every other Nigerians, I do not wish the president dead. No, far from it. I have therefore maintained dignified silence since we were told that the president embarked on his second medical trip abroad this year. Our president, President Mamadou Buhari, does not only have voice impairment, he has been on life support since June 6, 2017, at a West End London hospital. I want to say that it is time that the president throws in the towel and resign and allow this country to move forward. In the meantime, the presidency says it has chosen not to respond to Governor Adele Fayoche's call for resignation. The federal government has officially declared Nigeria free from the latest type C deadly cerebrospinal meningitis, a disease which has claimed thousands of lives since its outbreak in 2016. The Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Gayoli, told journalists after the Federal Executive Council meeting that there has been no polio case recorded for the year 2017, while cholera outbreak in Kwara State has fizzled out. Our correspondent Gloria Mizuke reports. The Federal Executive Council meeting resumed after the holidays with less than the usual number of ministers in attendance as the acting president walks in to kickstart the meeting. After the closed-door meeting, the Minister of Health announced that Nigeria is officially free from meningitis. We have formally declared the meningitis outbreak over in the country. And we also informed FEC that um, we have not recorded any case of polio in 2017. We have recorded several new cases of um, Lassa fever across the country. And uh, the cholera outbreak in Kwara State has also uh, fizzled out. Untimely death and illness among youth corps members has also been addressed as the council grants another approval. The other memorandum I'm taking at today's meeting had to do with um, how we will prevent unnecessary death among youth corps members across the country. And council approved the memo that henceforth um, we will include NYC members in the national health insurance scheme across the country. And this will guarantee access to quality care across the country, prevent unnecessary death, and also ensure that um, our UCO members receive the highest attainable level of care across the country. In the meantime, a new memorandum of understanding has been signed with the United Nations Populations Fund to continue with the procurement and distribution of free contraceptives across the country for the next four years. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. 
And just after the Federal Executive Council meeting today, the Minister of Agriculture, Aoudouwe, told State House correspondents that the recent exports get, is geared towards boosting the economy, talking about uh, yams, the current export of yams. And to, he also talked about plans to formally flag off the export to Europe on Thursday. He disclosed that 72 tons of yam will be exported in the first phase of the program to the United Kingdom, while some tons of yam that were exported earlier arrived in New York on June the 16th, 2017. Now, we account for 61% of the total output of yams in the world, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization. 61%. The rest is shared between some countries in West Africa and the West Indies. But for us to go abroad and not find Nigerian yams in the market is an embarrassment. And for those who may think that this is not anything significant, we want to assure you it is. Because Ghana is targeting $4 billion a year from yams in the next three, four years. And if they can do that, we who are the masters of yam production have no business lagging behind. Um, we don't even consume all the yams we produce here because most of it is lost to wastages because of poor technologies in preservation. We're working on that. We're going to use solar coolers in yam markets and yam producing areas to keep the yam temperature at 14 degrees Celsius, not frozen, but to keep it at that temperature so it can be good all year round and can last two, three years um, in the containers. So essentially, we're making this point because we're diversifying the economy. We're talking about uh, economic recovery and growth, and we will have to export whatever is needed from Nigeria by other countries so we can earn more foreign exchange rather than expend everything we have on importation. The Minister of Agriculture, I will do agree, speaking there. Elsewhere, activities at the Federal Medical Center at Bokota were brought to a halt as members of staff protested against what they call planned imposition of a new chief medical director. The staff and their numbers with various placards say they reject in totality the planned appointment of Professor Abdul Musa from the University of Ilori Teaching Hospital, who they claim has been penciled down for the job and associations in the center will not fall for the antics of the ministry in the shambolic and questionable promotion result released to the hospital management as a way of inciting the unions and associations and demotivating our members while paving way for the imposition of Professor Musa as a sole administrator on the center. The promotion result should be implemented in a manner not tantamount to distorting the present scheme of service and stagnating our members. In part two after the break, five suicide bombers killed in Borno State as University of Mid-Degree lecturers threaten strike action over incessant Boko Haram attacks. Do stay with us.